Nenzani matoto. Nenzani. Lete nenzani hibi zongi tuwa hii. Lete nenzani. Lete niatwega. This is my eye. I bought a hater man, I don't really care. This is my eye. Dumela Dumela Dumela, it's your boy Kema Hapa. Listen to Rulaba Fum with Lekwano, the modern day is Imajila, and we're back in it like what? Like Tsap Eva Fetu. Welcome, welcome back, Bafetu, and welcome to another episode of the Weekly Rundown with the modern day Izzy Machila. If you're new and you don't know what the Weekly Rundown is, it's basically just a summary from myself, you know, about what's happening in this beautiful country of ours in my own unique way. So if you like jokes, humor, current affairs, if you want to stay in tune with what's happening in this country of ours, this is definitely the show for you. Hit that subscribe button. And yeah, I plan to drop every Thursdays. You know, Kazam, guys, I try, I try. I know this one is coming out on Friday. But my plan is to drop every Thursday so that you guys, you know, have something to unwind to at the end of a hectic week because, you know, laughter is the best medicine. Because, you know, laughter is the best medicine. Yeah. Because laughter is the best medicine, guys. I will let you saw it my poor. Barki laughter. Nagizal allergy is the best medicine, but Barki laughter. So, yeah, this is the show for you if you are interested in jokes, you know, if you want to have a good time, unwind at the end of a hectic week and you just want to, you know, let loose, definitely the show for you. Hit that subscribe button. And without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Uh, obviously, you know, another eventful week in South Africa. You know, guys, I don't think I'll ever run out of content in terms of shooting for the weekly roundup, you know. This country is literally the actual meaning of the jokes right itself. I know I scribbled down a few jokes here and there, Mara. For the most part, these jokes write themselves. So if I ever don't drop a weekly rundown episode, we just know that it's either laziness or something else is keeping me busy. But it's definitely not to the lack of uh, news or events in South Africa. Definitely not that. Anyways, to get the ball rolling, I just want to give you guys a little bit of update from what I told you guys last week. You know, I last week I told you guys about the suspect of the parliament fire, Barkman uh, Zandi Lemath, right? And how he appeared in court the first time looking so confused. He was being framed, you know, he was so confused. You know, that's what I said last week. But this week he also he appeared in court again for the second time and he looked a little bit different. You know, he had cut his hair, cut his beard, he had a suit on. And, you know, to be honest with you, my initial thoughts when I saw him, I was like, you know what, nah, this man looks guilty. Yeah, I know it's a horrible thing to say, but yeah, no, he looked guilty. And not, not too guilty for me to just say, like, guilty as fuck, like Oscar Pistorius, you know. Oscar, you could tell when he was when he was appearing in court, oh, this nigga is guilty. But this guy, you know, he's just a little bit guilty, you know, guilty enough for me to want to hear the uh, South African police's side of the story. Because last week, when he appeared in court for the first time with his scruffy beard, hair, hey, and, you know, torn clothes and all that stuff, you know, it wasn't just me, guys, please be honest. Lou and I, when you saw him, we were like, this man is being framed let this man go you know go and find the real suspect the person who did this but now with his you know new haircut no beard suit ever through it and it looks like it's tailored you know a guilty man a hobo with a tailored suit i'm not saying anything guys but he looks guilty you know i i, I almost want to ask constable had what guys he looks capable right now you know he looks like someone who's motivated who's capable enough okay james bond maragogas James Bundus. And you know, Nane, I blame the people on his team because I don't think this guy went to his lawyers or PR people or whoever is on his team and told them what no, none of that. But these people suggested, or let's know, let's clean up your act. And I don't think they understand the power of a fresh haircut, what it does to the ladies. Ladies, you guys know what a fresh haircut does. You know, could I can already imagine him walking into court with that, you know, fresh haircut, you know. And one of the ladies in court, I got deserve it, you know. We are good to deserve it. Impundu. Impundu. Eh, deserve it. And then the magistrate is listening to all of this. This is a guilty case waiting to happen. So give man, give that man back his afro, his beard, his homeless clothes, and let him walk free. Good with those beard cards and hair cards and in the suits. Good, he went from Aksham, Sistokhe, Amudimuwa, Nawanawa, to Aram Skepsali, to let him go. 
to guilty with no possibility of parole. And another thing they added Dalimpo uh, Damanlao Jalamandela Rasul Mulebal. They added him to Zandile Mafia's legal team. Or guys know I don't want to say it but you guys know as well or once they appoint or they add Dalimpo to your legal team you just know or I they can't wrong to when you might as well just start thinking about a prison haircut tell the magistrate your orange jumpsuit uh, size and think about which numbers gang you are going to join because throng to is where you go in another thing that happened this past week is that uh, you know what now this one really angered me guys you know this one upset me i was pissed off i don't want to lie uh, etv decided to bring back anaconda anaconda really. i've i've watched it so many times i don't care how it's pronounced it's anaconda anaconda they brought back you know guys ne, i thought we're moving forward as a country i thought we were progressing we had stopped you know saying ki december boss on the first of december we have stopped dyeing our hair you know well some of us some of us you know we're still getting the progress we have stopped the existence of easy kotani and easy nyoka so we were going somewhere but this right here you know the return of anaconda anaconda sets us back like 20 years guys i don't want to lie to you you know guys you know my sis my mom watched anaconda my mom's child my sister has watched anaconda my sister's child has watched Anaconda. That's three generations of watching Anaconda. How, how, what kind of you know bondage do you guys want to tie to Anaconda to South, Black South Africans, guys? What what's what's ETV's end game? If it's Anaconda, it's Sarafina. Apparently, when profits start declining, go ETV. The CEO just says, "Okay, like a day." of like Anaconda or Sarafina because they know you guys are going to watch I don't think there's a single South African out there that hasn't watched Anaconda guys we've all seen it and right now when you watch it it's no longer about uh, for in interest purposes for entertainment or anything like that it's just to test how good our memory is you know because every time you watch it with your family or whoever the only thing that people are saying is that that's literally how we watch Anaconda these days and I want the CEO of ETV to come and watch it with us I wonder we know this movie front and back you know and while it's still there Kimu fed USB or something you know yeah it Avengers something something new about it because I, sometimes I feel bad for the people who rely on ETV for movies because I'm sure they still believe or Paul Walker is still alive because ETV keeps on showing them the same Fast and the Furious movies so guys as you might have noticed throughout my videos I use the word guys a lot right so this past week something funny happened so the coach of man city pep guardiola in an interview he said ah guys well this, the way he said ah guys you know it appeared it sounded very south african to me so i tweeted that and then a couple of people said this sounds like me or i say ah guys the same way as he does so please tell me guys if i sound like this in 180 minutes we concede one shooting target and that again chassis yeah. Ah, uh, guys, that is so good. It's so moving on, uh, in another funny incident on Twitter uh, this past week, so this lady tweeted that her baby Opa recently started to know to learn how to walk. Yeah, you heard me right, guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Opa. Then ch the child's name is Opa. Yes. How can you guys you know what? Ne? This thing troubles me a lot. This thing of giving kids or elderly names i don't like it because how can you look at an innocent child the one that you carried for nine months a newborn baby and decide to give him or her a name that automatically makes him or her your elder how does that make sense can you imagine the burden of this name opa on the kid you know it's really not a surprise that bana abakono supporter like their necks it's because of these elderly names that you guys keep giving them you know they're weighing them down i really don't like that i get the concept of buying kids oversized clothes so that they can grow into them as they grow older but the concept of giving them elderly names so that they can grow into it, it really doesn't make sense. It's just hateful, to be honest. I don't think you guys fully grasp how hateful it is to give a new child the name Opa. It's really hateful, guys, because the name literally means old pa, old pa, old father. So when I looked at this child, this innocent thing, this thing that you brought into this world, it didn't ask to be here. You just brought it into this world and you decided, oh, yeah, this is my old father. No man, guys. You know what? Now I think a representative from child line needs to be present in the birth ward or maternity ward. So when the moment you decide to give your child a name, you have to run it past a child line representative. 
so that they can approve or disapprove of it because amos i mean margaret does that for a child guys please be honest that's literally abuse from the moment the child is born and that abuse will continue with them until they grow into that name until they are 60 65 70 some of them even 70 it doesn't sound right you know i can already see the daily sign headline a baby named oba because it's, it's really you know worth a daily sign headline because daily sign you know we associated with fake news things that you can't believe and all that stuff and i literally cannot believe that someone looked at a child and said oba guys good how can you name a child oba mar when other kids are out there listening to baby shark do 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 these are the consequences of your actions so another thing that happened in this beautiful country of ours and jimutsaya decided to wake up one day are you know what matrix uh, matrix results are no longer going to be published in newspapers and media outlets and obviously you know about the rights they know their rights and they took it to court and apparently they won so news uh, metric results will be published in newspapers this whole incident reminded me of a time when metric results were announced in newspapers along with your first name your real first name not nickname I, real first name real second name and your real surname so that anyone and everyone who knows you through your first name second name or your surname was was able to identify you to see how you passed if you passed and how well you passed could they were they would write ridiculously the rachel manamela in a whole newspaper in black and white guys do you know how sacred second names are that's literally our link to our ancestors that's my ancestor's name no that's literally my great grandfather's name and then when i just telling it to the world when you speaking at the run 50 along with the fact that the party check a higher certificate <laughs> What a wild time, man. So I get I told you guys what the jokes that I tell you guys on this show literally write themselves. So here's an actual, literal, practical, real life example. Tugzin, Dada Tugzin, DJ Tugzin, or whoever you know him as is running a competition. And the winner of this competition gets to win a uh, you know guess that guys. Like a uh, winner. Trip away, a car, money, a gift, what? A feature from Dara Tuxin on his album, music video appearance. What? Guess that? Le Rome, what you? All of you, wrong. The winner of this competition gets to win a license. An actual license. Yakului. License, yes. The winner gets to win a license. And I know you have a lot of questions. Or do they give you the license? Or do they pay for your driving license? And then you, so that you can get your license? How? How, how is this? He didn't specify, so that leaves you no know, room for imagination. And then now in my head, I can see that if uh, the the winner of this competition, you know, the final stage of this competition is that you go to Tukzin's house and then udira parallel parking or bella vesiam pure abo abo puzi so Tukzin Tukzin hey yo Tukzin 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 sala lei biga lei biga lei and so if you ace it. There, you get your license. That's how I imagine it. DJs are taking the matters into their own hands because traffic department is low. And you need to, nah, guys, I can't blame them, you know. Mara, this is proof that this thing that we live in, nah, this thing is not a real country, guys. Maybe God was practicing how to make countries at Tomagarena, but it's certainly not a real country. So moving on, there's a new dance challenge in South Africa, obviously. It's a new dance challenge every month in this country. Because why? Because the ANC's failures to create jobs for the youth of South Africa has led us down a road of creating dance challenges every month to pass time. I want... So anyways, this uh, new dance challenge is called Umlando Challenge. And it's basically... Uh, what? How can I put this? It's guys for the most part. And they are dancing. Baladia Umlando. Balanda Umlando this year. Barana Mutlanje Rinlada Umlando. So as you can see the gents are dancing Balata Molando they're having a nice time and guys men to men I just wanna say well, I'm proud of you for proving the ladies wrong because they always say well, all men do is lie but those hips were fit. Those hips, Buffet, they're not lying. Love it. Keep up the good work, Buffet. Mara, I have a problem. I have a cry. And I'm still alone now. And still, I'm still alone. 
the descendants of Shaka Zulu. When I was Shaka Zulu, they, are, they think they are smart, but they, they can't trick me. Maybe you might have treated but now you're definitely not tricking me because I can see you. I know where you stole Molandoale uh, now, where you stole it from. You stole it from Batsonga people. You can't trick me. You took Shibela from Batsonga people and you called it Molando Challenge. Now you can't trick me. I've seen it before. Papa Penny and his backup dancers, they've been doing this for ages and they're still doing it. And if you don't believe me, take any video from the Umlando Challenge, switch off the sound on that original video Add or play in the background uh, Joshi Rimani's Bengu Bengu or Hegele Hege or any song or song that you like. Oh my, 170 beats per second. Play that song and then watch the video. You'll see what it corresponds. <laughs> Now you can't trick me with it. Like a pillar can follow him popo through and through. My neighbor used to wake up at 3 a.m. Manchester speaker as I had a little papa pee in Mola, a little Thomas Chow, a little Joshi Reman, and then our Ruba Lena Kuntungwal. So I know it's stronger. I know it's stronger music. I know she bella and I know she's stronger culture. You cannot trick me. So moving on, let's talk about my favorite person in South Africa. My favorite person to talk about, to joke about, the first citizen of the country. I don't think there's ever been a video where. I haven't spoken about this man. Hey, Kamarata Cyril and Nigella's down in Obani, Kibarata, as they say. So, Cyril and his people, NC people, were in Polokwan this past week to celebrate the birthday celebration of the ANC. And while they were there, you know, they decided to have a date night of all the corrupt people in South Africa, you know, a gala dinner of some sort. You know, now if I was, you know, in charge of SAPs or the Hawks or whatever policing department in South Africa, I would literally arrest everyone who was at that gala dinner. If I was serious about dealing with corruption in South Africa, everyone got da. You know, like a a lord, my tipa tipa, and our life got da. And then you will question them late. But anyways, at this gala dinner, yeah, ANC, there was a power failure, or was it load shedding? I don't know. And it was kind of you know ironic to me that there was a power failure at an ANC gathering when the party itself is the embodiment of a failure in power. So anyways, moving on from Tsukwa Saga, so at this gala dinner, you know, the, the people who are the very important people, very important, important in South Africa is another word for corrupt people, I guess, in case you guys didn't know. Very important people were there and they paid millions, actual, literal South African rents, millions, to be uh, to share the table, the same dinner table as several Ramaphos, right? And imagine paying all that money and then the gala dinner gets shut down because of a power failure. And then now, guys, I know this was not a, it wasn't a mistake. I just want to say to Cyril or there are better ways, you know, to end a date that you're not enjoying. Act sick, uh, fake an emergency, but to switch off the electricity in the whole establishment. Ah, no, come on, Cyril, man. Marine country, our retiring. So lastly, in this week's episode of the Weekly Rundown, a prominent boxer passed on, right? And at his funeral, they hosted an exhibi a boxing exhibition match, you know, to honor him. You know. <laughs> And you know, I understand the whole you know, honoring him with a boxing match because he was a boxing legend, he was a boxer himself. I understand that, but can you imagine if these you know, honoring the deceased thing became normalized? You know, I can just imagine Rilogo Finraling a porn star. Or a boy. Yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you no, know, low key, I would want to go though. But back to the boxing match, you know, I'm disappointed that the fight ended just like that, you know, because I would have loved for it to be called a fight to death. Am I right? No, okay, fine. Jokes aside, okay, serious. Jokes aside, guys. Ne? So this boxing match thing, ne, this one, it gave me an idea, right? An idea that we should do away with uh, last wills and testaments of the deceased and the siblings of the, of the deceased should fight for the estate 
like this just like this if at the cemetery with everyone watching and everything yes just like this exactly like this and obviously with the more the siblings the uh, the longer the tournament uh, will be you know the boxing tournament will be so it will basically be like a champions league where would so they will fight throughout the course of the the week leading up to the finira like let's say you have 20 siblings so the fights will take place leading slaughter the siblings are busy at it you know but they're knocking each other out literally and figuratively because you're knocking each other out watima and then oh like you understand that man anyways the final match will be hosted at the cemetery you know the last two standing siblings will fight it out as the coffin is being lowered into the grave right and then the crowd the or the church members and all the family members the family and friends they sing but instead of pinisha they say betisha i'm still working on that one guys that one i'm paying chance one more chance and then obviously i have a name for this whole tournament obviously now nah, i think things through up so the name <laughs> so the name of this tournament guys is called fist to fist fist to fist because why because you are fist you fist to fist to eat or uh, part of the inheritance like what no i put like sharp and just like that we're here to come to the end of another episode of the weekly round done with the modern day is Imagila. thank you guys for watching until the end uh, def I definitely enjoyed recording this episode. I laughed a lot. I hope you laugh as well. I hope you enjoy it. If you like the content, please hit that like button, comment down below, and don't forget to share the video with your friends on your socials, family, and who else? Thank you guys for watching. Till next week. Thursdays, I get I'm dropping on Thursdays. Please, if you think I should drop on other days, please tell me in the comments down below. But I think Thursdays is the best time because. Fridays will be easily to get started planning. I'm planning on how to how fair, but how not be a lot. How do you look at how 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 come at it? Saturday will be easily to plan that thing. Sunday you are recovering. Monday you can regard. So Thursday I think is the best time. Please let me know in the comments down below, please. And yeah, thank you.